Welcome back, everyone. I am podcasting here live from San Jose, California. Just got done with a brand new podcast interview with some friends here in San Diego. You probably heard me on their show before. Really amazing group of guys. That's the Mind Pump crew. So I'm excited that that show will actually be debuting in just maybe a week or so. If I check my schedule right now, I can see that it may have even debuted over the weekend because they were about to produce this very, very quickly. So this was an absolutely fun show. I do hope you check it out. Why don't I link it up today? So I'll put all the links today, all the research at stevencabral.com forward slash 2427. Uh, That's a fun show I just wanted to mention. One is because I'm obviously in my hotel room, if you're watching this on video, uh, because the show never stops. I actually said that to my team. I was like, the show never stops. We record the podcast. It always comes out every single day. And um, the thing is uh, that when I was recording this show, I knew that I was going to be able to hopefully share some tidbits and some different things from the show as well. Uh, It was a lot of fun because I did multiple case studies on the stress, mood, and metabolism, the hormones-based lab. And if you want to learn a little bit about testosterone replacement therapy, you want to learn how to boost your testosterone naturally, um, I definitely recommend checking out that show. All right, but let's get into today's show. Today's show is all about the seven myths and truths surrounding coffee. So I get a lot of questions on coffee. And the reason is, is that it's the number one supplement in the world, right? It's the number one supplement in the world. The number one supplement in the world is coffee, or you could say tea, black tea. So it's this caffeine. But today, I'm going to specifically be talking about coffee and not just the caffeinated version. But sometimes the decaf version can work as well. And I'm going to give you all of the different facts and fictions surrounding it. I've seen a lot about this. And that's because there's been a lot of brand new studies lately. I actually saw that Dr. Mercola put out uh, a study that I was reading. He already beat me to it, but he posted this uh, on Instagram about coffee and dehydration. So if you've ever wondered, does coffee dehydrate you? Well, there's a lot of new research that actually backs up previous research studies, and I'll be sharing that with you today. So seven truths we're going to go through, uh, all about dehydration, Alzheimer's, stress, glucose, anxiety, and more. All right. So let's get started. Let's dive right into it. Apologize that I'm not typically with my uh, podcast studio. But again, as I said, the show always goes on. So uh, let's dive in. The first one is this. Does coffee dehydrate you? So um, and again, I'm going to link up the research for you today. So if you're someone that loves to go deeper into the research, maybe you're an IHP, you want to create your own post on this. Fantastic. Right. So all of the research will be at stephencabral.com forward slash two four to seven. And one of the reasons that this got uh, popular is that the study actually got picked up by Apple. So Apple News said this thing, um, you know, does coffee, does coffee dehydrate you? And most people's initial inclination, which was mine, but this is going back now uh, over 10 years, when I wrote my book, the, the uh, one I wrote on fitness, which is a man's guide to muscle and strength. And of course, that was not my idea for the title because I trained half women and I trained half of my clients were men, right? So I did 50, I was always 50% basically. And the interesting thing is like, they made this a book, which I didn't know was going to be just for men's strength training. Um, and it's actually for women as well. So anyway, women can absolutely use the book. And that's the thing though, when you don't own the rights to the book, they can do whatever they want with it. They pick their own cover, they pick their own title. And that was that. But I was uh, very young at that time when I wrote that book. Uh, it still holds true. Still my, my basically best workouts are in that book uh, for a whole like $15 on Amazon. And as I always say, I might make a dollar from that book. Um, but in it, I actually, at that time, I learned because I was talking about coffee. And the initial studies way back in the day said, yes, coffee dehydrates you, anything with caffeine, because it has a diuretic effect. A diuretic effect means that your body is going to excrete more water than it would be typically taking in from that beverage. All right. So you're excreting more fluid because there is more stress on the adrenals, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, and on the kidneys to, to get rid of more fluid from your body. Okay, so here's the thing. That was original research. It made sense. The theory made sense. What they've since found is that it, that is still true, but it's only true in the very beginning. If you are a, hab- a, a habitual coffee or black tea drinker, initially, yes, you will get a slight dehydration-based effect. However, over time, your body will adapt and does adapt so that you do not become more dehydrated, 
okay? You're not going to get a whole lot of extra hydration from it unless, right, unless you're starting to wean down that caffeine, all right? Then decaffeinated coffee, decaffeinated herbal tea, that actually can be hydrating for the body, believe it or not. All right, so really interesting right there. The first one, that is a myth that coffee dehydrates you. So if you're someone that drinks a cup or two of coffee every single day, if you've been doing it for a while now, you're not gonna get the dehydration-based effects. Good to know, right? Good to know. Um, the second is this. Does coffee stop Alzheimer's? Can it help prevent Alzheimer's? Can it help slow it down? This one is back and forth. It's literally back and forth. Some studies show might have protective effects. Why may it have protective effects? Because coffee is loaded with antioxidants. Coffee is the source. Let me, let me state this. Coffee is the greatest source of antioxidants in Americans' diet. Now, I mean, that might be saying something, right? They don't eat a whole lot of fruit. They don't eat a whole lot of berries. They're not eating a whole lot of vegetables. So coffee is the number one way that Americans get antioxidants. It's pretty unbelievable. So there's benefits to that. Okay, no doubt about it. But a large uh, meta-analysis of varied and large-scale uh, research studies says no, that they could not find conclusive evidence that those who drank more coffee or drank coffee at all had any tendency to stave off Alzheimer's any longer than any others. So I thought that was interesting to see. Um, I would actually be careful because a lot of these studies say the more coffee you drink, the more protective, protective it is for the brain. But we also know that this third one is true. Does coffee increase stress? The answer is yes. Okay? The answer is yes. That is a truth. Coffee, in most people, increases norepinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol levels. And it does that if it's caffeinated. So it has a stimulant effect on the body. Well, what are one of the factors I've talked about with Alzheimer's that can cause or lead to Alzheimer's? High levels of cortisol. High levels of cortisol can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia. Well, if you are spiking your cortisol levels with coffee, it could lead to Alzheimer's. Now, this is where a little bit of bioindividuality comes into play. If you are more of a kapha body type, you're more parasympathetic nervous system dominant, you're a little bit more sluggish, you have, a cup, you have a cup of coffee, it might just bring you to baseline normal. I actually talked about that on the Mind Pump show. Some people are more of a kapha endomorph body type. They actually do quite well with it. I learned that from Deepak Chopra in Ayurveda many, many years ago. I didn't learn Ayurveda from Deepak Chopra, but Deepak Chopra is a proponent of Ayurvedic medicine, and I heard him say that about himself. And, and he, you know, he obviously had, he was a cardiologist. I don't know if a lot of people know that. Um, and has access to, to lab testing. Well, anybody can do this at home, again, with a stress mood and metabolism test. Have your normal coffee. What does it do to your cortisol levels? If your cortisol is normal, you're okay. You're good, right? So it's also the dosage. I know for me, I never, ever drink more than eight ounces of coffee in the morning. I just don't. Like, I just know myself. I, I know that I cannot have more than that amount of caffeine. Now I can do decaf. I'll sometimes have another decaf, but I do not do more caffeine than that. And I, cause when you start to get in tune with your body, you can actually feel that accelerated heart rate. And I'm like, ah, oh, there it is. You know, I, I push it too far. Right. So I just know you have to know that about yourself, but yes, it does cause stress. All right. The fourth one is this, does coffee raise blood sugar? All right. Well, this isn't a hard yes. So a hard yes is it causes stress in the body. Now, might be a good stress, a use stress. You might need it, right? Okay. But coffee may, may increase blood sugar. All right. Let me teach you. Let me just kind of share with you how that works. So I have a whole podcast on this. Does coffee break fasting? I'll try to link that up for you today. I also have another podcast on um, which foods do and don't uh, break an intermittent fast. So I'll link those up today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2427 uh, plus the research studies. Okay. So um, coffee can increase blood sugar even on an empty stomach with no carbohydrates or sugar in it. And I want to share with you how. So I've got a whole podcast on this. But if it spikes your cortisol levels and your 
body does not have any carbohydrates in the system, it is going to find glucose somehow. All right? So here's why. Uh, norepinephrine starts to get the body, increases heart rate, uh, potentially respiration, um, starts to move blood flow and circulation throughout, get your mind focused. And then what happens with the adrenal cortex is your cortex of the adrenals, which is that little, I wish I had my buddy Walter right now, uh, my model here, the adrenals uh, sit right on top of your kidneys. Okay. Well, once the body's primed, you release cortisol. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid. It's going to make sure that inside your bloodstream, there's enough glucose. So if you're a little lower on glucose and your body's like, whoa, we've got a stressor here. It doesn't know it was from the coffee that you drank. It just knows that there's a stressor now in the body. Um, that, that caffeine will actually spike uh, what's called the gluco glucocorticoids, cortisol. Cortisol will break down liver glycogen or it'll find it in the muscles and it will bring that in your bloodstream. So it can actually raise your blood sugar without you having any carbohydrates. And I have a whole show that breaks that down. So do feel free to go to stevencabral.com forward slash 2427 for more details on that. Okay. So the thing is that doesn't happen for everyone. So this is where that bioindividuality comes in. So do you see, do you see why sometimes coffee can be a yes or a truth about causing high blood sugar? And sometimes, no, it's a myth. It depends on the individual. And I'll do a recap in just a moment. All right. The fifth one is this. Does coffee increase anxiety? The research in this seems to be a resounding yes. Now, it's levels of anxiety based on tolerance to caffeine. So I just shared with you, I can do about eight ounces of coffee in the morning. That's a small mug of coffee. That's it. Like I even have some of the cold brew I do. It's like an individual seven ouncer. Um, I just do a small, I just know. I just literally pour seven ounces. That's it. And that, that's typically what it is, seven, eight ounces. And again, sometimes I'll have decaf. But after that, call it what you will. Like I don't feel anxious. I'm worried, anything like that. No. But it's that higher level of fight or flight and a little bit of irritability, a little bit of uh, off kilter and a little bit anxious. And it does cause that. Caffeinated coffee, decaffeinated coffee, will not. All right. So really important to look at that coffee. If you have anxiety, if you have any um, level of panic based disorders, I do not recommend any caffeinated beverages. I just don't at all. You want to keep the body more level, keep the mood more level. All right. The sixth one is this is organic co coffee really better than regular. Okay. <clears throat> this is an important one because coffee is actually quite easy to contaminate. You could contaminate it with pesticides, with sprays, with solvents, um, with mold. And so it is one of those things that you want to look for organic, if possible, mold tested, and um, ideally no solvents used on it in order to clean the beans or make it decaffeinated. Okay. So believe it or not, they use an ethanol, like a gasoline, on some types of decaffeinated coffee to decaffeinate the bean. My recommendation is if you do decaf, like I will, because I actually enjoy coffee, um, I'll do a decaf. And I use what's called an organic Swiss water process coffee. They decaffeinate the organic beans with water rather than a, a gasoline-based substance. So this is, a, this is absolutely a truth that, yes, in a perfect world, you will go for organic-based coffee, which also, if you're going with a good brand, I have all my favorite brands at stephencabral.com forward slash resources, that it will have more antioxidants. It'll be a better quality bean and give you more of what you're looking for. I'd also love to be able to um, link up a show that's related to this last one, number seven. All right. So I have a show on the best ways to brew coffee. Believe it or not, there are actually better ways than others to brew coffee. One way of coffee, and this is it, so does decaf coffee lower good cholesterol? So this is very interesting. And I had read this many, many years ago, and the answer seems to be no, it does not. That that was a myth, that decaf coffee can lower HDL. Now, it may have been, though, that the contaminants added to the decaf coffee may have in that study shown 
an adverse effect on cholesterol. But it does not. Here's an interesting thing that I looked into, though, when I was doing the research for that. The answer is no on decaf coffee lowering your good cholesterol, but boiled coffee may increase cholesterol a bit. So if you're someone dealing with higher cholesterol issues, you might want to be careful about going with a boiled-based coffee, a high-heat based coffee, a coffee that does not use a filter. And I actually go fairly in-depth on this. I talk about chlorogenic acids and other specific things in the coffee that could raise cholesterol in some people. So you want to check that out. I don't know the actual podcast number on that, but again, we'll link it up at stephencabal.com forward slash 2427. Now, this is one that I didn't necessarily... I don't agree with the science right away. And I think that's really important. I think we have to be careful just blindly believing any of the science that we see. So what I did, <coughs> excuse me, I actually looked at multiple studies to see if this had actually been corroborated. And the truth is, yes, it has. And that is because of the specific oils in coffee that if not filtered out can actually raise cholesterol levels. So that is actually a truth that boiled coffee, decaf or not, could raise um, unhealthy levels of cholesterol, but it does not appear, and especially not for the organic Swiss water process, that decaf coffee will lower good cholesterol, which is your HDL. So my overall summary is this. Some are yeses, some are noes, and some are maybes. So things are all not always so cut and dry. Because based on your bioindividuality, a coffee... A caffeinated beverage may cause dehydration in the body, but usually only in the beginning, okay? So we kind of push that one out. The next is, does it increase stress, okay? Well, the answer is yes, it does. It increases stress. But are you someone that's kind of more sluggish in general? Oh, it gives you a little bit of boost, a little bit of stress to actually get you going, raises your cortisol to a good level. Not on a healthy level. And again, you can lab test that if you haven't, at home lab test. The next, does it raise blood sugar? It does, but not on everyone. Does it for you? Well, you can test that right at home with a simple glucometer. Does it increase anxiety? The answer is yes, but to what degree does it increase anxiety in you? <clears throat> the second is, is organic coffee, or the next one is, is organic coffee better, really better? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely, it is. It's cleaner, it's healthier, it has more antioxidants, and it might even be tested your, your variety for mold. Does decaf coffee lower good cholesterol? It does not. It does not appear to at all. In all the most recent studies, does boiled coffee, decaf and regular, increase uh, cholesterol a bit? It does. So if you're someone that has low cholesterol, probably no big deal. Higher cholesterol might be something you want to look at. So to sum it all up, coffee loaded with antioxidants, can be beneficial for some, can cause anxiety, panic, and others, right? Coffee, it has a, a very strong association, actually, as long as you don't overdo it with some immunomodulating uh, compounds, which is not a bad thing. Good, right? It's good for you. There's all those things that people call plant toxins, right, that are actually some of the benefit. Um, overdoing it, in general, is harmful for everybody, okay? So some is good, but a lot most likely is not better. And the dose is always dependent upon the individual, like most things in life, right? So hopefully today's show was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. If it was helpful, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. 